Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. I've been missing this past week because, well, I have some exciting news. Me and my wife had our first baby. Mini Ed achieved. Let's go. Uh, well, I'm back to my normal schedule now, uh, so the streams are going to pick back up. And today, I thought we'll have some fun and play around with Lua a little bit and maybe create our own color scheme for NeoVim. And yes, 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 I'll show you how to do it in VS Code for the one person in the back there. I'm going to keep shaking my head until you switch to NeoVim. Switch. So I'm using Kickstart for this, and just to kind of give you a look at the like code structure here, you're gonna get something like this. You're gonna have your init Lua here, right, with all the like basic setups here, and the way they have it here is you have like a custom folder where you can set up your plugins as well. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is just here in the Lua folder, I'm gonna make a new one, and let's call this. So this is gonna be the name of the team, uh, Nightly Icy Night. Let's call it Icy Night, like that. And in this IC9 directory, I'm going to create an init.lua file. And there we go. Let's pop this open. So in this file, what I'm going to do is create a local variable. And this is how you can do it in Lua. And then I'm going to create another one specifically for holding all the different colors that my team is going to have. So you're going to have like a BG here, an FG. Um, if you check out all the other teams, they have like like eight, at least eight of them. So there we go. I picked out these colors right here. If you're having a hard time kind of finding color schemes, there's a bunch of sites out there like colors.co. They have a bunch of popular palettes here. Adobe also has something, but we don't mention Adobe on this channel. They don't deserve it. And also, um, you can, you know what you can even do? You can even like go into chat GPT and upload an image and you can say, hey, extract me like the main like primary colors from this image so it's pretty cool you can actually like do a studio ghibli image and then you get the nice colors and how it works in neovim is that you essentially have these highlight groups that you can target so if, for example the little little line down here the search icon here if you do backslash like that and you can target these and then color them uh, accordingly so what i'm actually going to do is create a function here but i'm going to actually attach it to this m local variable so when we actually return this out we can call this uh, and another file as well. And then what I want to do here is called the vim command. And on this vim command, we can essentially clear uh, all the highlights that were before that. So you're essentially kind of starting off on the blank slate. So you can call vim command like this, and we can say clear, uh, sorry, highlight clear. And then another command I've seen people use here is something called syntax reset. So we can do syntax reset like that. And what that does is essentially it reapplies all the highlight defaults. And then after this, we can just apply all of the styles below. You can also specify and tell Vim that this uh, team is used specifically on the dark background. Uh, so you can call Vim O background and set that equal to uh, dark. We can also define the name of our team by calling vim.g.colors name like that and we can set this equal to what did we call it we called it icy night and now we are ready to apply the colors but what we can do to make it a little bit simpler we can define another variable here so we're going to say local and i'm going to call set so this is going to essentially set whichever highlight group that we target and what i'm going to do is call the vim api so you can do that and you can say vim underscore set and underscore HL. Actually, let's not invoke it here. Uh, instead, what we're going to do is call it down here separately. But as you can see, it takes in three parameters. One's going to be this NS ID. Not really sure what this is, but I saw everyone put zero. So I'm going to do zero. Uh, but it says it's a namespace ID for this highlight. So I set all of them to zero. It was perfectly fine. Then the name of the like group that you want to highlight. So whether that's like the search or uh, maybe the numbers here on the side. And then finally, you can also add either FG or BG. So for foreground and background. And now here for the last argument, we can just open up a pair of curly brackets and we can say for the BG, well, we want, oh, make sure it's equal here. We're not in JavaScript. <laughs> Damn it. Color is dot BG, right? There we go. And then you can do FG. And since we have everything defined up there, we can just do colors dot um, FG, right? Done. Cool. So now that this is all set up, check this out. We can just head back to the like big init Lua here, right? So here, and then all I need to do is call this require, and then you just pass in the name, and then we call the color scheme 
function that we attach to it. Okay, and then you should also get the autocomplete here. So you could do IC night dot init, all right? That's what we're looking for. Again, if, if this goes up on GitHub, it's pretty much the same process. Usually what you see is people attach uh, another function here called like a setup on it. And then in there you can like, have multiple teams as well. So what you do is you just like maybe have three local variables. You'd have one for like icy night, one for a fiery night, if you feel like a bit excited. Uh, but that's pretty much it. This, there's nothing more to that. So just to test it out, so we just require this, nothing else. And then if we head back to the icy night Lua here, uh, I'm, I just changed the BG here to black, just so we can test this out. Okay, so if we close this up and we reopen this, we should have a black background. And there we go. How cool is that? All right, awesome. So now it's all about really kind of finding all the important things that you want to define and style. Okay, so I'm just going to modify this a bit. Now, as in like finding all of these different highlight groups, there's like a bajillion of them and each of them have like a hundred. So like your tree sitter is going to have a bunch. Uh, you can customize a telescope as well to have its own style so you can do the borders. And it's really about just finding the name. So I don't really want to waste your time too much on it. But just so we can modify and kind of see a little bit of it, uh, I'm just going to copy some of the color palettes here. So it's icy blue. So it's currently black here on the background so i'm going to copy this so again for normal here this refers to kind of the normal text and your buffer here so the bg color here um that's what we need to change right so i can do change in quotes and let's place that in there it didn't copy it why are you lying to me you said you copied it there we go so let's paste that in and also for the foreground color we can put maybe like a light like this one here so i'm just gonna copy that and let's paste that here in the foreground as well so there we go now when we open this up again as you can see my background has the nice bluish tint to it and the text the normal text here is almost white okay uh, and then there's a bunch of other like see how gray that is like the background whichever line i'm on we can also customize that so that would be the is it even here not the comment uh, we need to make a new one actually so let's do set zero i think it's called visual if i'm not mistaken i'm gonna keep it as foreground and then the background is gonna be colors dot uh, and then here we're going to probably pick a different one. So let's try the blue here. Uh, I'm going to put the blue and I'm going to copy one of these more lighter colors right here. So let's go here and paste that in as well. Let's hit save and see if that works. So now the visual shouldn't be gray anymore. So let's give that a go. And then not them. There we go. And it's still gray. Damn it. I got the wrong one. Oh, sorry, I'm a dumbass. So visual here is for like the things that you have selected. So since we added that blue, if I do V like that and select something, look at that. So we have the nice lighter bluish color. But I kind of want that here as well. When I go like this, I don't want that dark grayish color. So maybe a, a bit darker uh, bluish. And then this visual one should be a bit lighter. I don't know, this is the first time I'm doing this. So let me just go here and copy a blue color. I'm just going to get that from this palette. And what we can do is set zero here. And the highlight group for this is called the cursor line. So let's set this quickly as well. We'll say BG for this is going to be equal to, uh, I'm just going to paste in this color. I guess we could give it a name up here. Let's call it highlight equals to, let's paste in this color that we copied. There we go. And let's go here and put in the colors dot highlight. Lovely. Let's give this a go. Here we go. We can go here and look at that. That's a bit too bright, but you get the point. There we go. And I think you can even like define when you have like your cursor on it, you can actually change the color behind the text, if I'm not mistaken. Let's give that a go because you can go here and then do BG. Sorry, not BG. FG, right? And then we can do colors foreground. So let's see what should be that white color, right? Color is dot FG. There we go. Let's give this a go. We also need to change this, this text here because it's so hard to see. It pretty much blends with the background, but let's give that a go. Open this up. There we go. Let's go here. And yeah, that works. See, so now when we actually hover over that text actually makes it that foreground color. Super cool.
So there we go, I added a bunch more here that you can see. Let me zoom this in a little bit. Uh, so you can do something like the line number as well. As you can see, I set it to blue. And when I hover over it, it turns into orange. You can do the uh, NeoVim uh, line here, this at the bottom. As you can see, we set that to orange as well. You can do stuff like the search. As you can see, I set that to orange. So when I do backslash, we get that. You can do pop-up menus. You can do syntax for specific things like your function, how it should look like. You can even do like diagnostics. So when you do something like trouble, as you can see, the same styling applies across and even Neo3. So when you open this up, it's still nice and consistent. So there we go. There's not much else to it. And it's super fun to kind of play around and make your own team. So let me know if you're making your own team. You should post it down below. I'll love to have a look at it on my next stream. Uh, before we get into making it in VS Code, we'll do the same. Uh, I want to thank today's sponsor, Brilliant, for sponsoring this episode. Brilliant is an awesome interactive learning app that seriously makes you a better thinker. Don't get me wrong. I love watching video tutorials here and there. But after a while, I feel like my brain just starts zoning out and Brilliant's whole thing is hands-on problem solving which has been proven to be way more effective you're not just like memorizing syntax you're actually learning to think like a programmer by breaking down complex problems into smaller pieces which is you know it's kind of like the whole thing that we do my favorite part about Brilliant is that the lessons are short sweet and interactive so anytime you have a five minute break you can just sit down and do a couple of those lessons and learn something new and fun uh, I have I highly recommend you to check out their Python content. It's fantastic. Whether you are a seasoned developer or just starting out, there's something engaging for you to do or a new skill for you to pick up. You can even go outside of your branch into stuff like AI and data analysis. They have fantastic courses on that. So if you want to sharpen your skills, you can try out everything Brilliant has to offer completely free for 30 days by scanning the QR code in this video or heading over to brilliant.org slash developed by Ed. You also will get to snag a 20% discount on your annual premium subscription. Big thanks to Brilliant for sponsoring this video. The story on VS Code is a bit different because there are packages out there that you can use to kind of generate that for you. And then you could just do like a JSON file. Ugh, that was burping there. Well, also yawning. Have you ever had that happen in your life? So all you really need to do is open up the terminal and there's a specific package that you can install actually two here. So we're going to install these globally. One is yo and one is generate code, generator code. So let's get these installed. After that's installed, let me clear this out. I'll CD into my playground here and let's make a directory and call this VS code IC night cd into vs code ic night and here we're going to call yo code so what we can do here is simply head here and do a new color team and here you can start from scratch or you can also import one that you made but let's just start it from scratch what's the name of the extension we'll call it ic night there we go we'll hit enter it's okay we'll just you can give the names and everything. What's the name of the team shown to the user? I see night. Let's pop that in. There we go. We're going to do dark here. We're not going to initialize a repository for this. Let's just simply create it. And finally, let's open it up with VS Code as well. And here we go. This is pretty much kind of the same as we saw in NeoVim before. Oh my God, that text is so small. Let me zoom it in a little bit. Wow, VS Code looks so funny. I haven't been in this program in ages. Uh, but as you can see, it's basically a JSON file here. And then it's like you have the name and the scope and then the setting. So you can do the, the actual color on it, foreground or whatever. So you got the variables here, for example, and you can pop the settings of the foreground color on it. Okay, and then the editor background, you have that on top here. So just really about looking and seeing kind of what you like. But I copied over pretty much the same colors as I did before. I cannot do the shift G and GG to kind of grab this. I don't even know how to do it in VS Code anymore. But let's paste in. Oh my God, I keep wanting to do colon W to write and save. Control S. Ugh, that's weird. There we go. Now to install this theme permanently on your uh, VS Code, what you can do is open up a new window here and we'll install globally WSCE. And then we should be able to call a VSCE package on this. Let's hit that and hit yes here. And this is going to generate you another file here 
called VSIX. And we can permanently basically install the Steam now uh, on our device. So what we can do is say code, and then the command is dash dash install extension like that. And then we can give the name of our VSIX file. So it's gonna be icy, and I'm gonna block this with my face. No, not you, you. Ah. Here we go, icy night. And then we can do dash zero dot zero dot one dot VSIX. Let's hit enter on this. And it should, uh-oh, uh-oh. Okay, so let's just go here to the top. So we need this publisher thing. So I'll just I'll just put my name here. Developed by Ed. And there we go. And there we go. Now when we run this command, it says the icy night was installed successfully. Great. So let's see. We should be able to just close this up and open this back up again. And we should be able to simply open up the command palette up here and search up Icy Night. Let's see, Icy, look at that, it's there. We got it, it's on our machine ready to go. And now what we can do is simply uninstall VS Code. So thank you so much for watching this episode. Hope you enjoyed it, hope you had a little bit of fun. Uh, I'm probably still gonna stick to Kanagawa. I'm really enjoying that team, uh, but probably maybe in the future, I'll make my own and kind of release it uh, just for fun. So let me know which one is your favorite team and I'll catch you in the next one. You have a lovely day.